Hey guys, welcome back to the Snapper and Chronicles. Today we're back at you with another Ratchet video. Uh, today I have a Crowder. I think that's how you pronounce this. I'm not too sure. It's K A. No, it's K R A E U T E R. And this is model 32070 and it's made in USA it's a little bit interesting uh, but before we get started if you like my content or you find ratchet videos or two videos at all interesting could you please give me a like and also consider subscribing to this channel okay uh, this like I said this ratchet is a little bit interesting it has a kind of an interesting history and Crowder is an old company. I think they started, according to uh, Alloy Artifacts, they started like in the late 1870s. And I think most, throughout most of uh, their tenure, they, uh, I think they focused mainly on pliers and stuff like that. Mm not much on ratchets or sockets or anything that's another story it comes later on but um, they were kind of a big uh, plier plier company here's an old set of uh, crowd of pliers you can see there it says crowd of USA and these are from like the 20s or 30s and uh, let me see. This one is the 1821-8 Crowder Lineman Pliers. And like I said, these are probably from the 20s or 30s. And this is kind of the stuff they mainly did. Uh, pliers, different type of pliers early on in the early 20th century. <clears throat> Towards like the 60s. Uh... They were bought up by a company called Dresser. And Dresser also bought up a company called SK. So I guess they started branding Crowder Ratchets. They started making and branding a Crowder Ratchet. Uh, but these were made since they also owned SK, Dresser. These were made by SK, and I want to send this uh, send this video out to my uh, friend of the channel. His name is Tom Gun Tools, and he's a big uh, SK fan. And I've met him a couple of times at local uh, local tool swap meet we have in my neck of the woods. And he's a really cool guy, and you should check out his channel. Okay, so. Where did we leave off? Yeah, right. In the 60s, mid-60s, these started to appear uh, under the Crowder name. These um, SK Ratchets. SK Made Ratchets. I'm not sure where these were sold. Uh, not sure what stores carried these. If You know, it was a general item. But here's an SK Ratchet. This is a 3 eighths four five one seven zero and it seems like they've made this one f SK has made uh, this ratchet forever probably since since the 40s they've made a ratchet that's pretty much identical to this one and they still might be making these today if they haven't stopped and are ready to uh, Unfortunately, they were bought by a Chinese company, and who knows what the future holds? If they're gonna just just ship ship production off to China, hopefully not. Uh, but if history shows us anything, that's usually the case, and that will be you know not a good thing because uh, I don't know for eighty years, whatever. Uh, SK was uh, 
It's been bought up by a lot of different companies, but always stayed in the U.S. And it's unfortunate that they uh, might be leaving. Uh, so anyway. So yeah, this is a 3 8 model of the Crowder. And as opposed to this handle, which is nicely knurled. And they always had like a nice knurling on their handles, SK. SK made this ratchet for Crowder or for Dresser with this kind of strange handle. It's uh, has like a groove in the middle that's rough and kind of rails on the side that are smooth and both sides are the same. And this is what it looks like from behind. You see the two the two grooves on the top and the bottom and the rails on the side. I haven't used this to work with so I'm not sure how comfortable this would be if you really had to like really had to put a good amount of torque on it but it doesn't seem as good as the knurled handle for like you know for general work if you have to work all day with with a with this ratchet so kind of a, a unique handle don't like I said don't know how comfortable this would be if I had to use it all day and on the bottom has made in USA and has some letters that forged in AV don't know what that stands for so let's open this up and take a look inside and let's see if uh, any surprises Okay, the usual SK snap ring or compression ring. So nothing nothing much to see there and it's your typical SK mechanism. There's nothing different in this mechanism to a regular SK. I haven't tried it, not sure if this will drop in to an SK. It looks like it might. Looks like it probably would. Looks exactly the same as your average 3 eighths SK mechanism. So to take these apart you just what I do is I press down on whatever side of the pole is sticking up. I press that down and depress the plunger and then I pull this out but remember there's the spring and the plunger there so it's gonna want to fly or get loose okay here's your plunger and the switch and it's a solid plunger pretty long long and solid and And here we find the little spring. And here's the switch. It's a two two piece switch. It's just a flat piece of uh, metal that's been peened onto this round part here. I think this is one of the first SK videos I've done and it's not even an SK like a, a real SK but I think like in all the videos I've done on ratchets I haven't done an SK teardown a traditional SK teardown I think I did a Frankenstein SK teardown but this is the first regular SK here's the Paul pin it's very wide it's pretty beefy it's short also and the paw the poles on SKs are usually kind of thin 
that's what you get. They're kind of thin, but wide also here. So what you give up in thickness, it kind of gives, puts a little extra metal in the thickness here. And these are only like two teeth. Yeah, two teeth, maybe three there. That's what they look like. The pole is chanfered, the hole on both sides is chanfered. That's the pole. And here is the mechanism housing. There's a a thin slot here for the pole and kind of a big hole there for the switch and here's the hole for the pin for the pole that's what it looks like, looks like it's been chromed some of it's coming off with age I think when I took this apart it hadn't been taken apart probably since it was made it was a lot of old grease in here what it looks like here is the ball detent looks okay not too bad of a job there and here is the switch the outer switch it's metallic and it has like this wavy metal look to it like almost a shimmer you look at it like that in the light and when this goes on the ratchet it goes on like that and this piece of the switch fits in that gap there here is the broaching and the head I think everything was chromed the only thing I see this broaching is kind of not perfect, let's put it that way. You see like a lot of these teeth, like you see one tooth, it'll go to the end and it'll be like correct. And then you see a lot of these teeth are like kind of cut off here, but not in that they were broken just that some in the broaching process it was kind of sloppy let me see here you see a good example mm, you can maybe you can see it a little bit here I'm trying to find a like this tooth here, you see how long it is? It goes all the way to the back and it's good and square. And then the teeth next to it are kind of not all the way, don't reach all the way to the back and are kind of like ground down. And you would think, okay, well, that these are broken teeth, but I'm not convinced of that. I think this was part of the broaching process where some teeth, like these teeth here, made it all the way to the end and some of them were kind of not machined as well. I don't know. You guys who have SKs out there, let me know if uh, you run into this also. Because I run into this in other companies. Uh, Later on, Williams, they started having bad broaching when, when, uh, here, you see how these teeth are long here, all the way to the end, and then the ones next to it are like, like, kind of like cut off, or don't make it to the end, or kind of like, 
not that great. Yeah, like I was saying, Williams, uh, when they got taken over by uh, Snap-on, they started having bad broaching too. Or like kind of that same. It looked almost exactly like this, like that kind of like that sloppiness on some of the teeth. Especially the teeth in the back. The teeth in the front are fine. It's always the back teeth. Or the teeth towards the back. So, and those were, I, I got those, I've had ratchets that were pretty brand new. That looked like that. And, you know. And I tried to say, well, maybe there were broken teeth. But how can a brand new ratchet have broken teeth? You would see it inside the ratchet. You would see pieces of broken teeth if that was the case but in a lot of the, a lot of these ratchets that I've seen uh no no evidence of that broken teeth just like I said kind of the manufacturing was kind of off okay to put this back together oh this video is way too long <laughs> you get your pin you drop that in you take your your switch you put your spring back in there you get your plunger back there and like that and you take a pick or something and and you smush that plunger down okay now you take your switch remember that cut out there goes like that with the switch and I kind of put it in the middle there so I can get it seated in the head and now this ring okay this ring hopefully I can get this it won't take me it won't give me too many problems let me see. Okay. Oh no. Let me try that again. All right. There we go. Alright, you see if it switches, if it's ratcheting, yep, it's ratcheting. So, there we go, there's the Crowder uh, 32070, made in USA, made by SK, probably towards the 60s, late 60s, maybe early 70s, uh, yeah. It's uh, pretty much a copy, the mechanism, a copy of uh, your regular SK. Alright guys, until next time.